I'm not gonna sing. Well, <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Ay. So, first of all, I want to say. Um, so before stream, I was like, I'm gonna see if I can get my PayPal stuff situated. Um, and then uh, I was setting it up. Hi, I was setting it up, and um, I didn't realize, so it was like, okay, I can make a PayPal I have now into a business PayPal, so I thought when they asked me to put uh, first and last name, I was like, okay, they're gonna, uh, they already have my name because they already have a PayPal attached to this, so um, I put in, like, my streamer name, um, and then it was like, okay, that's your legal name, right? And then they didn't let me change it, so I have to figure that out, so, oh no. Oh, boohoo. It doesn't, it, it, it's okay. We, we still, music down. music down, no, music goes all the way up, actually, okay, there you go, lol, um, but yeah, uh, PayPal stuff, not situated, so, don't know, don't, I don't get anything, but that's fine, we still vibing, like, we still gaming, doesn't really matter, uh, I'll, I'll figure that out eventually, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the only one that pertain, the only one who matters, uh, who not, ugh, the only one who cares about that's my manager. <laughs> so, sob sob, yeah. God, <laughs> listen. If I could do this for free, I would, and I am currently. That's how we vibe. So, I'm playing Fear and Hunger. I've been, I've been on a Fear and Hunger kick recently. Uh, yeah, we still gaming. Uh, I've been playing Fear and Hunger again recently. I love the game. Um, I would love to say that I'm one of the biggest Fear and Hunger stands and gatekeep Fear and Hunger from most people, but that's also because. Uh, I, it's um, a fun game, but I also know I'm not because I get literally all of my knowledge from like two YouTubers. <laughs> so <clears throat> can't really be the most passionate when I'm learning from the best, you know, uh, but I love it. Um, don't stink up my chat. Stinky mod. Stinker. Stop that. So we're playing Osiru because one of my friends told me to, because I was like, oh my god, I'm, I have gotten one of the endings with Olivia, because I love her, um, and I've gotten, see, I don't know if I got it with Olivia, actually, or if I got it with Marina and had Olivia in my party, because I remember getting a very, very overpowered Marina, but also, I'm, uh, my memories of the time when I played Fear and Hunger are not my own memories, so, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't hold claim to the last time I played this game, um, fucking, uh, spirits have overtaken my body, <laughs> Nah, uh, I just do not remember at all, uh, what I was doing, so I could have done Olivia, I could have done Marina, I know I had an OP Marina, um, but I've only played this too, uh, so we're gonna play Osa's Room, and we're gonna try and do the entire full text adventure with no guide. I have pulled up a guide, I have not looked at it, but I have pulled it up if we die more than like five times because I'm gonna be real. Um, I'm gonna get start getting impatient and I'm gonna start wanting to uh, actually play the game. Um, but we're gonna try and do the little text adventure at the very uh, beginning, which I've heard is literally harder than Fear and Hunger. Uh, though I hear that mostly from people who are dedicated Fear and Hunger one stands, which I understand. I'm terrified. That game scares me. Like, I love, I love, I love Fear and Hunger 1. That game's spooky. <laughs> this game, this game is daisies and roses compared to Fear and Hunger 1. They're both spooky, but, like, I, 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 I've, I've lived in this spooky my entire life. Um, I haven't lived in that spooky. That spooky's scary. That spooky's scary. That spooky scary skeletons. It's bad. So, we're going to try and do that. Um... Other than that, we're chilling. We're vibing. I have emo music on. After, like, this playlist is done in 50 minutes, it's an hour of gorillas, and then 50 minutes of emo music, 
and then an hour of gorillas and then 50 minutes of emo music it's just the vibe for tonight you know um smoking that good delta eight gotta love it keep my bones from feeling pain uh and yeah i'm going to do the main thing i feel like i have to like i preface when i do things i don't know lol <laughs> As you can see, also, I, I moved everything around because um, Fear and Hunger is a different window, and it has a different aspect ratio, so had to had to get my manager to tell me how to do that. I'm going to be real, because I didn't know that my little background thing could, like, turn into a square. I thought it was a permanent rectangle. I can smonk for you, bestie. Yeah. I'll smonk your bones away. Here, have some good bubbles. next time I go um get stuff I want to get THCA instead uh because like the fucking the vape shop I go to has just a bunch of stuff <laughs> thank you um uh, the vape shop I go to has like a bunch of different stuff and the guy who I whenever I go there the guy that I like I go there more to get screens and then I go there to like get like, flour and stuff, because I need screens more than I need, more than I need bud, um, but, uh, he's always like, oh, look at this new stuff that I brought out, look at this, you need to try this, so, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, uh, he kept talking about THCA, and also, uh, my manager kept talking about THCA, um, and so, I might, I'm gonna get that next time, but, he's smoking, schmunk and delta, god, the funniest thing about this is that um, the fear and hunger screen is so tiny. It's so tiny on my on my entire window of everything. Get it? Boom. And usually I do not name them, but we will. Hee 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 hee. I'm your favorite, CC. Uh, easy mode because I'm a baby. I'm a baby. I'm a baby. We already know this about me. This is a main fact. I will play every single game I have ever loved on easy mode. I hate this already. Okay, let me turn the music down just a little bit more because I'm going to have to narrate this. Uh, there we go. That'll be good. The soothing sounds of the rail tracks. You're not used to such peaceful and tranquil, tranquil atmosphere. You can't help but let your mind wander. You reminisce what has led you to this point in life. You were born and raised in the raging heats of Abyssonia, the continent with a long history embedded with chaos and warring factions. Those fools, the people around you waged wars over ancient disputes and grudges started by long-gone ancestors. But that is how it has always been. The people of Abyssonia held ancestors and their spirits on a godlike pedestal. But it's not like it was any better in the north. In the, continent, in the continent of Europa, those fools worshipped ancient deities that none of them had ever even seen with their own eyes. And they certainly had their disputes as well. A great war after another. What's worse, their disputes didn't stay within their borders. They dragged everyone into their mess. They had set their eyes on Abyssonia, now because of its strategic position, in securing an access to oil and other raw materials from the east. It was only a matter of time before their troops would march on your land. You were not going to die because some faceless puppeteers chose to focus their magnifying glasses on your home country this time. Despite your young age, you decided to leave. Your siblings and mother would mourn your departure. They wanted you to have something to remember them by. I am taking the chalk chalk. <laughs> Let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the mic a little closer to my mouth. There we go. You took the chalk check with you. 
You had considered yourself as successfully dead inside, not swayed by emotion, but it took a lot of effort to convince yourself that you wouldn't miss your family. You still obviously had weaknesses to weed out. You headed to the city of the sun, Amon, to educate yourself on spiritualism and religion. You were no slough religious, uh, physic, bleh. you were no slough physically, but you always considered your, your intellect your true forte. And just like that, you were accepted as an apprentice after some preliminary tests. At the same time, news about the Great War closed Abyssonian borders, where all... <clears throat> At the same time, news about the Great War closing Abyssonian borders were all they could talk about on the radio. Amon was far from the borders, and it would probably remain safe for a good while, even after the war broke out. You figured you'd still have plenty of time to learn at the temple and leave the country before it was too late. At the temple of Amon, you were given a choice to learn various different schools of spiritualism. Um... I'm going to choose home country. You learned meditation. Okay. We'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. I have never played Osa. We'll deal with it. We'll cut off heads. We'll deal with it. Everything will be gained eventually. You were talented and praised for your quick learning at the temple. But that came as no surprise to you. You knew you were smarter than most of those old geezers. They only possessed knowledge you wanted. Once you had that, they served no purpose to you. More time you spent at the temple, more pathetic the priests of Amon started to look in your eyes. Religion in general started to look dubious. R two, after examining how the world functioned, I need to read fully before I speak words so I know how to put tone. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Most religious doctrines were modeled to accommodate the current ruling class. Religions, uh, religion was used as a mere tool to control masses more than anything else. Dedicating your life to worship would equal dedicating your life to kings and queens of the time. You had left your home because you didn't want to die fighting someone else's war. So why would you waste your life serving someone else's in turn? Around this time, you found an old scroll from one of the many Amon libraries. The scroll mentioned an old sect of magical practitioners originating from eastern sanctuaries whose worldview seemed more appealing to you. Yellow mages differed from your traditional priests. Instead of dedicating their lives to worship, gods existed for them. Their force was to be harnessed to further one's own personal growth and agenda. Instead of finding order, finding order from the commandments laid out by the older gods, yellow mages revel in chaos. Chaos was the natural state the world would return to time and time again, so why even try and force it to anything else? You quit at the Temple of Amon and decided to head east in search of those in pursuit of these yellow mages. You traveled beyond your home continent, ultimately finding yourself at the narrow streets of eastern sanctuaries. You got acquainted with the local temples. Even they had adopted the worship of Almer as their main religion. Eastern sanctuaries were no better than the temples of Amon in that regard. If anything, Religion was even more pro- mm. Oh, that's a lot of vowels. I'm just gonna say prevalent there and dictated the way people were to live and die. I'm not gonna try. I know when to pick my battles. <laughs> you were looked down upon by the scholars and religious leaders of the area. Because of your very public opinions. That didn't bother you. You knew better. In time, your, convi your conviction convinced the facets you wanted. You were approached by a group of traveling mages who were colorful attires. The yellow mages were still around in this day and age. Were reduced to small, separate groups wandering around the world to study all fields of the otherworldly. The group saw the potential in you and offered you a place among them. You liked what you heard and decided to join the wandering group. What did you specialize in? Uh, 
advanced magic because I am smart big brain boy who big and smart and smart and big. F oh, qu okay. I got hurting. Okay. Your path of learning and self-growth knew no end. Your travels brought you to a small border town in Eastern Sanctuaries. There, you met a curious person, Hadil Azif, a self-proclaimed wizard from the East. Despite his pretentious appearance, his family name, Azif, was well-known and even somewhat feared in certain occult circles, which gave him claims at least, which give his claims at least some credibility. He was gathering a group of adventurers to accompany him on a perilous quest. He had inherited a map from his late grandfather that was supposed to lead him to an infamous dungeons of fear and hunger itself. The place used to be a noteworthy location of pilgrimage for many aspiring mages and priests in the distant past. The young mages you had spent time with previously told ominous tales about the dungeons as well. Initially, you had uh, dismissed Azif's talks, only to be haunted by the most brutal nightmares on the following night. Something was calling for you. You had to witness the place for yourself. You joined the motley crew of adventurers Azif had managed to put together and traveled through war-torn Europa. Most of your crew quit halfway through to Rondon because of how difficult it was to cross borders during those chaotic times. The closer to the destination you got, the more feverish your dreams began, became. The remaining members of your ragtag fellowship were visibly sick from stress and otherworldly pressure that had befallen on you the moment you had set out on your quest. The breaking point was the day that you were to finally arrive at the dungeons. A heavy fog drowned your camp and made navigation impossible. Using compass, using compass a did... Oh, that is just written wrong. Oh, using a compass did no good, as the thing was just spinning circles wildly. Distant growls and howls created unrest. Not that there was any need for that, as superstition and constant misfortune had already convinced your fellow travelers that this trip was cursed from the start. Your companions panicked and scattered to the mist as Eve himself had been sick from the constant nightmares for half the trip already. You left him curled up in a fetal position in his tent and ventured forward on your own. After walking for a while, you started to make out something behind the thick white veil. The mist revealed structures of some kind. You got to a set of old ruins, where they looked more like a measly pile of rubble now. If it wasn't for the dreadful aura emanating from deep within, you couldn't tell if there was anything remarkable about this place at all whatsoever. Near the main entrance arch, there was a makeshift archaeological site with tents and digging equipment. The site looked abandoned. On the other side, there was a side entrance to the dungeons, with stairs leading down to the darkness below. Um, okay. Uh, I'm just going to go in the main entrance. <coughs> Getting my fucking audible voice ready. <coughs> Drinking something. <coughs> the moment you stepped inside the dungeon walls, you felt immense otherworldly pressure. You understood that the place would drain any normal person to the brink of madness and starvation in a matter of mere hours. You had to be efficient about this. Even if the day was still bright, the darkness seemed to suffocate all light, and you could barely see anything ahead of you. You lit up a torch. <laughs> moon, moon left. <laughs> moon said spooky, and then moon, moon went to the go shower. Well, you stood at the vestibule of the dungeons. To your left, you saw a doorway leading to what seemed like a kitchen. There was a small room with a wooden with wooden old wooden furniture bleh, 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 with old wooden furniture in front of you and to your right there was a closed door. See, if I had played fear and hunger one, I this would be very easy for me. Hee hee hee. The catty grin waits for no one. Even this, even the scariest, even the scaredest of cats stay on that catty grind. <sighs> uh, 
I'm I'm gonna go to the kitchen. I literally I literally have played maybe like I've I've literally only looked at the first couple of rooms in Fear and Hunger because like I have the game. But I've only I, I, I got spooked and then I stopped playing. <laughs> oh, perfect timing, bloody tears. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, the room had small stools around a large wooden table covered in cobwebs and old stains. At the end of the room, there were old cupboards and kitchen utensils that had collapsed onto the ground. The other corner had rows of wooden barrels. I'm checking the barrels. The barrels might have once stored food items, but that was hundreds of years ago. There was nothing useful there anymore. Suddenly, you hear loud banging and screeching coming from the entrance hall. Adrenaline was ru rushing through you as you ran back to see just what had caused the noise. The closed door ju was jolting from its hinges. Something big was trying to force its way through the door, whatever it was, creating inhuman guttural sounds between its swings at the door. Um. I'll, I'm going to go hide in the room in front of me. You checked the room for any good sports to hide in. Sports? Oh, wow. You checked the room for any good spots to hide in and decided to crouch behind a bookshelf. The place gave you a good vantage point while hiding you in the shadows. The door crashed open. You saw a dark silhouette of a gigantic malformed being push malformed being pushed from the open doorway. The creature made gurgling noises as it slowly wandered to the kitchen. Thank fuck. You used this chance to sneak past the thing to the dark corridor where it first came from. Only the creature had got, had clearly gotten used to the darkness as it sensed you the moment you got out of your hiding spot. Fuck! You charged to the unknown darkness without a second thought. You ran as fast as you could, creating distance to the malformed beast with each step. You couldn't see much in the darkness, but a doorframe that had light shining through its cracks caught your attention. You tackled the door open and stumbled to an overgrown courtyard. Quickly, gl quickly glancing back at the dark corridor, you noticed that the beast was nowhere to be found, to be seen. You figured that the last rays of setting sun still kept it at bay. You took a breather and slowly walked across the yard. The grass had taken a sickly yellowish color, and the setting sun created ominous shadows as its rays hit the lone gallows, standing at the center of the enclosure. As you managed to focus your thoughts, you realized that there was an additional, vo additional voice echoing in your head. Something or someone was calling you from the depths of this forsaken fortress. There was something very curious about this echo. You needed to find its source. Not like you hadn't any choice but to delve deeper as the sun was rapidly setting down stripping you from the last barrier that kept the murderous beast hidden hiding in the shadows the courtyard led to another door to the darkness you pushed forward you were at the foyer of the dungeons the hall was large to your left was a la la laboratory Pfft. almost a laboratory laboratory to the right there was a long corridor leading to total darkness, and before you rose a large staircase up. Um, God, there's so many ways to die. I'm not even... Dark corridor. Let's go. Works for the memories, even if they weren't so great. It feels like you, but sweeter. Sorry, I need a break. Okay. Your torch slowly pushed away the darkness as you advanced towards the unknown. The further you got, the stronger the echo inside your head became. You couldn't make out words clearly, but this was definitely the right direction ahead. Oh, fuck yeah. 
Okay, because, like, I was thinking the laboratory had torture, tor- fucking little little hobgoblin ass, um, and I just don't trust the stairways up. I don't, I don't know if that would even work, because I've never heard of a second floor to the fear and hunger. I've only heard of basement levels, so... A large room opened up behind a set of rusty iron bars. Your torch revealed human-like figures that stood still just beyond the radius of the light. Upon closer inspection, you noticed that these figures were medieval iron maidens. Human-shaped torture devices that had seen practical use, judging from the old stains that had formed from the seeping blood of their victims. The room had numerous, numerous, whoa, The room had numerous other torture devices as well. Most of them would probably be inoperable in this day and age. Among them, you saw an old reinforced chest, and at the back of the room, you saw a corridor leading to the cells. Uh, I checked the chest. The chest looked old. It might as well have been medieval, for all you know. As you tried opening it, you realized the lock was still fully functioning. You couldn't open it without a proper key. You felt a cold draft run across the chamber. The draft seemed to be guiding you towards the dark corridor at the end of the room. Check the check the corridor, I guess. Uh. I'm doing loud. Killjoys, make some noise. <laughs> okay. The corridor that opened up was a long one with multiple cells covering each side. At the end, there was large bars sealing off a staircase only a rusty old lock stood in your way towards the deeper darkness Uh... check this all all the doors were locked your torch barely lit any of the cells so there was no telling what was inside of them Uh, okay quarter open up check the gate Despite being ancient, the lock seemed surprisingly durable. You figured that you needed a key or something similar to open the pathway down. Okay. Um, return to the foyer. Uh. Okay, let's just go to the library. Let's go. Oh. That is a bad idea. 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 I know this game to know that that is a bad idea. Never jump down the toilet hole. Never do it. Never do it. Okay. Uh, Your torch lit up a row of grimy old toilet seatings. Old bloodstains were mixed with what looked like semen. You wondered how and why you knew such an exquisite little detail. Uh, investigate. There is nothing much to the toilet holes. They were just what you want, just what one would expect them to be. Okay, return to the foyer. I guess I do have to go up the stairway. Uh, oh my god, I'm so smart, I'm so smart. It has to go there anyway. Me when I toilet jump. Help, hello. Um... The wide stairway led to an old Almerian sacrificial altar with a skeleton crucified to it. Next to the altar, there was a side path leading deeper inside the fortress. Examine the altar! The altar was a typical ritual crucifix used to worship Almer, the Ascended One. A sacrifice would be put on the cross, and their blood would be slowly drained for days to come. Traditionally, such rituals were used for protection. Almer would look after the immediate surroundings for as long as the blood would run down the cross. The last sacrifice this cross saw must have been the skeleton. There was no blood dripping from the cross anymore, so no protection from Almer either. Check the side path, I guess. The path was a narrow corridor, crudely made from misshapen bricks and stone. It looks like the the floor had collapsed at certain points, and you were able to hop over the trench with ease. Oh my god, I can speak. Oh yeah, don't worry guys, I'm a skeleton. Skeleton storage. 
a large room opened up before you. The room stood out with its finer decor. Spiral floor tiling and its many bookshelves covered the walls. The southern end, the south. The south end corner of the room had a small doorway shrouded in darkness. The north end corner was more dilapidated, with its caved-in ceiling and all. Search the bookshelves! Most of the books... Most of the books... Most of the books that were still left behind had been growing molds for hundreds of years. But there were a handful of manuscripts that were... That, 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 that appeared surprisingly new. Um... Okay, so we're definitely in the Dungeons of Fear and Hunger after the God of Fear and Hunger was born because these are all skin Bibles. Uh, I'll get everything eventually, so just give me Grogroth now. Um, the manuscripts all seem to be part of a bigger compilation, and you would have loved to have all of them with you. But you had a job to do, and you couldn't burden yourself with too much extra luggage. Oh, mold? Not a dog. I'd die. Lol. Lol. Uh, a large room opened up before you. The room stood out with its finer decor. I read that already. Uh, check the doorway. I need to find a key. Ah. <laughs> Um, your torch slowly lit up a small room and revealed a wooden desk with drawers, a carpet that was from the Eastern sanctuaries, judging by its patterns, and a partly eaten corpse that seemed to be part of an archaeological expedition. Check the corpse, check the corpse. The corpse belonged to one of the adventurers who had delved here with the archaeological expedition. I can say that word and I can say it well. That's what his... That's what his outfit told, at least. This was the traditional Savari outfit you had seen in movies. Someone or something had been chewing on the body. There were human-like bite marks all over the torso and neck. You found tobacco, a blue vial, and prison keys after searching his pockets. Yes, 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 yes! Faint whining and moaning could be heard from, a partly eaten, from the partly eaten archaeologist. The corpse had trouble getting back on his feet. But after a small stumble, he already turned his attention on you. Slowly, one step at a time, the ghoul approached you with his mouth stretching unnaturally open. Um. Cast hurting? Thank. Yay. You finished your chant and focused all your hatred and fury on the concentrated part on the ghoul's soft torso. Like a vortex, the energy tore the archaeologist's skin and rotted meat and left a gaping hole in their chest. To your surprise, the ghoul kept on advancing towards you as if nothing had happened. You had never faced a living dead before, and it seemed like traditional means of harm had very little impact on something who had felt no fear or pain. You backed away from the room, yet the ghoul kept on following you. You cautiously, cautiously hopped over the collapsed floor in the corridor leading up to the library. The creature was not as agile, and instead face-planted on the ground as it tripped on the rubble. The ghoul was waist-deep in the trench, unable to climb back up. Desperately, he tried reaching out for you with his blood-soaked hands. The whines and growls turned into agitated shrieks as it furiously tried to snatch you. It looked like the creature was stuck. He figured you'd best leave the area for now and explore elsewhere. You're at the foyer. Um, now I can go to the dark corridor... Um, nothing new, nothing new, awesome. Uh, check the chest. Okay, I still don't have the proper key. Ghoul, I relate to you. I get you. Check the dark corridor. Loud creaks and groans could be heard behind you. Something big had just entered the foyer. You figured it must have been the malformed archaeologist from before. The sun must have set which had made it possible for the creature to advance through the courtyard. The creature must have had your scent as his, foot starts, his footsteps clearly closed in on you at a rapid pace. You had to act fast. The corridor had opened up as a long one with multiple cell doors covering each side. At the end, there were large bars sealing off a staircase. Only a rusty old lock stood in your way towards the deeper darkness. Uh...
I'm just gonna book it. You had the creature cra- uh, trash the nearby torture chamber. He was right on your heels. You couldn't see in the darkness, but you could sense his intense hatred looming in on you. The gate was locked with a reinforced lock. You tried to remain cool as you hoped for the prison keys to work. The beast was already charging towards you as you opened the gate and slipped inside. Only seconds before, the malformed beast smashed against the bars. Yes! 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 Oh my god, I'm so scared to die now. We've gone way too far. This is what this game is. Too scared to die. Violently, the creature tried to reach for you, whilst making low grunt noises from his swollen throat. The bars and the gate seemed to hold the beast for now, but you didn't want to stay and find out whether that thing could eventually break in. Instead, you took the stairs deeper to the darkness. The thought crossed your mind. If darkness had twisted those poor sods to become mindless beasts, would the same fate await you if you stayed at the dungeons for long enough? Smash. The stairs became sticky from old gore and blood the deeper you got. The air was stale and had a rotten smell to it. The voice inside your head got louder. You still couldn't make sense of any words, but it was definitely calling for you. Deeper. You had to get deeper. That much was clear. You entered a huge chamber full of partly buried skeletons and rotting corpses laying about. The ground had a thick layer of dried blood and filth, which had accrued acro- um, around the chamber walls across over the years. <sniffs> Each step you took echoed to dizzying heights. You couldn't see the chamber ceiling. The walls just rose up forever to the darkness. There were two stairways in the chamber. One led to the ground level you had just escaped, while the other one led to the lower levels. In the middle of the chamber, in the chamber, in the middle of the chamber was a rather new-looking wooden contraption. I'm going to examine the pile of bodies. Most of the bodies had been decaying and decomposing for hundreds of years. Some bodies looked fresher than the others, while some were reduced to bare skeletons. The ludicrous amount of corpses did raise questions about the purpose of this chamber. But there was no one around to answer these questions anymore, so you just took everything at face value. There were two staircases. Um, look at the contraption. You didn't notice the gaping hole at the center of the chamber until you got closer and your torch lit it up, uh, lit up the surroundings. The wooden contraption had been built around it as a freight elevator of sorts, lifting and lowering items and people if necessary. Bessie was good knowing you guys, slash slash dramatic. Lol. The contraption itself stuck out just by not being stained with blood and filth like everything else. Judging by some of the equipment around, the elevator must have been used by the same archaeologic expedition that it set up tents outside. No, I know, right? Yeah. Osa's uh, text adventure is long as hell. Also, hi. Uh, You could have used the contraption yourself, too, if you had some rope with you. There are two staircases. Um, oh. Uh. Yeah, I did not mean to do that. Lol. Um, just take the stairs down. The stairs leading down were sticky with the grime, like everything else in the chamber. A cold draft moved you along to the chasm that awaited you at the bottom. A giant underground ravine opened up before you. Even your torch couldn't properly light up the area. There were iron grid platforms suspended above a seemingly bottomless chasm. The platforms were mounted on cavern walls and linked together with a shaky-looking bridge. The side you were on had a few individual prison cells in a row. What awaited on the other side of the darkness was on the other side of the bridge was shrouded in darkness. Uh, I guess I'll check the prison. I never check the prison cells. All of them appear to be locked. Some of the locks were too rusty to function. They appear to be nowhere inside. Not that you missed anything important. You can't see them. Okay. Just, okay, examine the ravine, I guess, first. Uh 
The grid platforms looked old and rusty. The platforms gave worrisome creaks as you walked on them. The fact that parts of the platform had already collapsed didn't exactly reassure you of their condition. A giant underground ravine opened up before you. Even your torch couldn't properly light up the area. There were iron grid platforms suspended above and seemingly a seemingly bottomless chasm. <sighs> okay, just walk over. Um, you cautiously walked up to the bridge. Just putting some weight on the thing caused a couple nuts and bolts falling down into the endless depths. You braved across it. The bridge felt like it was about to collapse at any moment, but somehow it remained together. The other side of the ravine was more or less identical to the one you were just uh, you just came from. There were three cells in a row. At the bottom of the uh, platform, there was a corridor leading away from the ravine back to solid ground. Um, check these ones. All logged. Um, there was a huge naked creature inside. Its features look human, but the person must have been at least two... By 2.5 meters tall, if not more. The upper body of the creature was shrouded in darkness from the moment you thought the creature was still breathing, but you figured it was it must have just been a flicker flickering torch creating illusions, surely. You walked away as quietly as possible, regardless. Okay. This time you were convinced. This thing, whatever it was, was still alive and breathing. You wondered if the bars and cells door would be enough to hold the creature if it turned out hostile. Um, go to the corridor. The corridor took you to a small intersection. To the left, there was a doorway to a small room. And to the right, there was a corridor continuing deeper into the darkness. Uh... I'm so scared to die. I gotta think. Make sure I'm stream chat up. Okay, um, I think I'm just gonna. Yeah, I'm just gonna check the small room. The small room looked like it had once belonged to an army officer. There were numerous weapon racks in the room positioned next to an empty shelf. At the back of the room, there was a wooden desk with an impressive looking leather recliner behind it. Behind the desk, you noticed a small cast iron chest and what seemed like a rusty lever. Check the weapons rack. There were few. There were a few weapon, a few swords and spears still left on the rack. It looked like there might have once been more, but looters had probably taken everything that looked half decent and valuable. One of the swords wasn't completely rubbish, and one of the spears appeared to be in surprisingly good shape. You couldn't carry both around, but you, I mean, you didn't want to over encumber yourself after all. I will take the officer sword. You heard distant chains rattle by the chasms. Seems like the small commotion you caused by your exploration reached the ears of someone or something. Um. Return to the corridor. Just head deeper into the darkness. I, uh. Oh my god. Um. Your torch pushed away the darkness. The dancing light flickered on a lone skeleton chained on the wall. The corridor circled back to the great chasm and its suspended platforms. The grid iron bridge connecting the two sides had completely collapsed on the end of the ravine. You noticed a rope tied on the platform. On the other end of the rope, you saw a corpse belonging to the archaeological expedition. This person had apparently hanged himself. The horrors of the dungeon much have been must have been too much for him. Uh, lift him up. Uh, 
we were right in your assessment. The person had modern clothing that looked like a stereotypical Western archaeologist. The person had nothing of value. You did pick up the rope, though. Okay. Um... <sighs> Head back. Your first step. Your first steps. Oh my god. Uh, your footsteps were the only thing echoing in the air, apart from the occasional water droplet heard in the distance as you headed back. Okay. Um. No reason to check any of the cells, honestly. Uh. Go to the small door. You were standing on a gridiron platform that was suspended above a dark ravine. Uh, the side you were on had a few individual prison cells. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's nothing up here. Return to the upper floor. As you walked back up, you once again heard the echo inside your head. This time, you could almost understand some words. Deeper. You must delve deeper. The correct path must have been somewhere at the bloody chamber. There were two staircases in the chamber. One led to the, level, low, to the ground level you had just esca escaped, while the other one led lower. Um, examine the contraption. The wooden contraption had been built around a gaping hole. You could use the contraption yourself, too, if you had some rope. Awesome. Yeah, use it. You tied the rope tightly to the wooden beams and threw the loose end down to the pit. A cold draft could be felt coming from the depths below. You headed down. Deeper, deeper. We must go deeper. You climbed down the claustrophobic bloody pit. The pit opened up, and the area that revealed itself was even more open than the ravines upstairs. There was a huge cavern behind the fortress ruins. The rope ended up on top of a crash wreckage. An iron cage had crashed on the rocky ground from the pit you had come in. You had came from. A closer inspection su suggested that it was an elevator of some kind. Needless to say, it wasn't functional anymore. You stood on stalled ground next to the wreckage. The cavern was huge. Your torchlight left you standing in the middle of darkness, with no points of interest apart from a makeshift campsite with a couple of tents and some archaeological equipment. Okay. Um, examine the elevator wreckage, I guess. The iron frame of the elevator had bent from the fall. There was still a broken chain hanging on the roof. The chain must have lifted and lowered the elevator when necessary at, back when the elevator was still functioning. You stood on solid ground next to the wreckage. The cavern was huge. Uh, examine the campsite. As you walked up to the tents, you noticed that there were no signs of life there. The archaeological crew were gone. The campsite had a couple of tents side by side. Open crates full of digging equipment and a makeshift table full of various documents scattered around. Behind the camp, you found a large digging site. Uh, check out the documents. I'm gonna fucking smoke one second. A report documented each item found from the digging site. There were pictures of said items etched on paper. The items looked mundane for most parts, but all of them had carvings on them that were unlike anything you had seen before. They must ma they didn't match with any culture you were aware of. 
One document ta- caught your interest, especially. It had a sketch of a cubic object with various ornaments and sigils carved all across. Something about this item raised the hair on your arms and made you sick to your stomach. There was something special about this cube, no doubt about it. The campsite had a couple of tents side by side. Oh, check out the tents. Um, The first tent had a sleeping bag and clothes scattered about. Among the useless junk, you managed to find five matches. The second tent was mostly the same story, except there was a collection of archaeological findings on the table. After your initial excitement, you noticed, however, that those findings were only run-of-the-mill artifacts, pieces of broken vases, and other trinkets of no use. Among the junk, you picked up an ornament lantern. The campsite had a couple of tents side by side. Um... Uh, go to the digging site, I guess. Uh, the digging site was bigger than how it looked initially. The site expanded to nearby cliffs with wooden platforms leading down to the dark chasm. Um, go on the wood platforms. Uh, you descended down to the dark depths. The echo inside your head returned once more. Misguided soul, can't you hear my call? The words were clear this time around. Good. Finally. The voices became ever more clear. The archaeological crew had been digging deep and revealing something that should have stayed hidden. Ancient structures could clearly be seen protruding from the rocky surface. The structures looked almost like remains of a city from another time. The wooden platforms took you straight to them, and a ladder was set to lead you inside what looked like a temple or some other place of worship. You climbed in. Most of the temple was dilapidated by the time, but you could still spot some murals on the wall that depicted rituals and gods not known in this day and age. Hey, thank you for the follow, Holy Tiramisu! Thank you! And hey, if I'm coughing without you, just start smoking. (laughs) Hi, hi, I hope you're doing good tonight. Even if you only witnessed glimpses of something larger, the scale of building already impressed you. It was unlike anything you had ever seen. Eastern sanctuaries... The city of Amon, Abyssonia, they all paled in comparison. The voice inside your head was getting loud. This way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way! You dug the rubble with your bare hands. You turned over wooden structures and pushed away a stone pillar. And there it was. The source of the voice. A burnt and withered head. A severed head, to be more precise. The head had deep lines running across it. In the place of its eyes were dark and empty sockets. The only hair on the head was a sparse mustache under its big nose. I wasn't expecting a worm like you weaseling its way this deep to the dungeons. But I'll take what I get. All earthworms do, after all, is dig. Your garments. Hmm. Maybe you do have more than a camel spunk in place of your brains. Are you a yellow mage or are you not? You confirm the suspicions of this beheaded oddity. Figures. This is why a measly maggot like yourself could hear my call. Very well. Kneel before me, for I am your master, Nasra, the doom and terror of modern man. The name. Nasra. That was a name you were not expecting to hear. It was a name even the Yellow Mages only talked in the darkest hours of the night. Nasra, the harbinger of the burning crusade. Nasra, the bringer of torment. Nasra, the doom and terror of the modern man. 
the great wizard from the eastern sanctuaries went by many names. He indeed was your master, for his beheaded wizard for this beheaded wizard was the one who gave birth to yellow mages and their ideologies. Only that had happened over a thousand years earlier. There were no records of Nasra for at least five hundred years. <laughs> you are a lucky bastard, lucky indeed. There is a man I want skinned alive. After that, I want you to rip off their spines, those maggots. They will slump before me, limp and feeble. Your master seemed to be surprisingly up to date with the twists and turns of the world had taken since his absence. He had a mission for you. As a yellow mage, you were supposed to follow your own ambitions and greed. But there was a lot you could learn from this death-defying wizard that could further your knowledge on dark matters greatly. You decided to play along. You were sure that this terror of the modern man was perfectly aware of your reasoning, too. That was the typical relationship between a master yellow mage and their apprentice, after all. You were to travel to the small country in the eastern Europa with the beheaded wizard to a town called Prehevel. Your master promised events of cosmic proportions. The stars were aligned for something big to happen, something that would turn the tides of this world for good. The head left out details from his story on purpose, but that did little to bother you. You would just jump to the deep end of the otherworldly world. You couldn't have asked for more. With this little information about the task at hand, how do you prepare for the trip? Um, magical goods. You managed to find two patches of tobacco and a condensed lavender. You felt tense since the moment you embarked on this journey. Every night you've seen nightmares of the horror that would await you in Prehevel. Whatever the price, the opportunity was too interesting to pass. With mixed feelings, you continued onwards. Save your character history? Yes, 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 yes. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god, I don't want to do that ever again. Oh my god. Ah! I did not expect to do it in one go. I never want to do it again. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, skip the intro? No. <laughs> Because I want more weapons, god damn it. Smoking again. You feel like someone was watching you while you slept. You hear voices echoing from the beheaded wizard. We're in his radius now. Better not let me down. Oh, uh, whatever. Loot, 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 loot. You find an axe. I wish I could run from the very star. Oh my god. You find a bottle of vodka. Uh, social legends and find a light blue vial. Sometimes I, I wonder how much I should narrate and then I have to remember that I'm the type of person to watch a video and like only listen to it in the background. So I would need someone to like narrate the entire thing to me. <laughs> you. I've been looking for you everywhere. Just where do you think you ran off to? Don't you understand the hurry we're in? I don't understand. The eyes of the janitor bulge out from their sockets as his expression intensifies. No one expects you to! You're a stupid fucking human after all! Why am I Carcat Vantas all of a sudden? I don't have many voices, so you know what? Some people are just gonna have to sound like Carcat Vantas. Now, get your ass back to the workbench! I can't, I'm here now. This is your last chance! Next time it's punishing time! I... You sound so silly ass. What am I supposed to do? What? You're supposed to assemble new cubes, of course. 
As for how, figure it out yourself. If you're not capable of that much, you're beyond, you're beyond hope and useless in every sense of the word. Homestuck mention. Oh my god, major L alert. <laughs> what you googling at? I'm. She's googling how to make a cube. There's <laughs> nothing to see here. Eyes on the cubes. Work, or I'll rip those eyes out of your pretty face. Okay, now I can turn the music up a, a bit more since we are out of um, constantly um, speaking hell. Um, I need to get another sippy of. I need to get a. Walter. I just ordered, um, I just ordered Gamer Sups, so I'm currently just drinking plain old water. Wait, Gamer Sups? G Fuel. G Fuel. I just ordered G Fuel. Can't mix this up. God forbid. God forbid the G Fuel police come to my house. Okay, I will, by the way, I want to say, there are words that I can say as a person, um, but I will not say as a streamer. Does a little pleading face. Uh, they both start with Jesus hard. It is. It's so hard. You hear voices echo from the beheaded wizard. You stupid or what? Why the hell are you playing their games? Why is he also now Carcat? I gotta fix my voices. Speedrun cubes! Speedrun cubes! The girl in pink is trying to get your attention. Where do you think you're going? Uh, I'm going. Oh my god, he's stuck. Oh, never mind. He's not. Wait. Come back here. Everyone is car cat. You try hard enough. Everyone who you think has a grizzled voice can be car cat. Uh. Just take his arm. Motherfucker. It's fine if we lose limbs, by the way. This isn't real. Good job, Paulo. You're like a cat. I just wanted his Kassara. I didn't need his Kassara. I did need to fucking equip shit, though. I got so much, like, I did not need his Kassara. I had the Officer's Sword. Uh, but I needed to equip the Chalk Chalk and the Officer's Sword, and I didn't do that. Because I've never done this, and so I forgot. I'm not used to getting so much. I'm not used to playing a mini game before I play the actual game. So now I have 25 health, so I hope that goes back up to 100. I think it does, I'm pretty sure. Francois! 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 Sup, my boy. Hello, my poet. Hola, my poet. Why do I sound like I'm calling him a slur? Hola, my poet! Why? I, I forgot. Was it, uh, I for, uh, there we go. From what I've heard, Osa um, stays in that little, like, uh, Hall of the Gods longer than, like, any of the other characters because of the, 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 the mental fortitude or whatever. Um, it's it's the Ola. That's why it sounds like a slur, because it's the Ola. It's the Ola in my American-ass accent. <laughs> 
No, I think it's the use of my, actually. I, th I think say, I th I, yeah, I think it's the my. Ah, there you are. I do not know what I'm doing here. One second. <laughs> the moon. It must be the moon god, you ponder. You've read some vague tales about it during your times at the Amon libraries? Got you pulled out for that nasty from that nasty place. You were going deep into the rabbit hole. Now you are safe under the beautiful green hue of the moon. What is going on? Hue. That is what I am here for. To explain the situation you are currently facing. To explain the great once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that has befallen within your grasp. Since our words cannot possibly reach my master, I speak in his behalf. And who might my master be? Well, for now, let's just say that he is the delinquent one, rare, the trickster moon god. You know it. <laughs> and me, you? Call me Perkela. I am just a humble servant of his celestial majesty. Perkela. Perkela. The name does sound familiar to you, but you are not sure where you've heard it before. You are the dreamer. He is the dream. My master has invited 14 of you to join us in this jubilee of cosmic proportions. Fourteen candidates, but only one true victor. I'm really just trying to, like, put, throw as much Bjork into my th voice as possible. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> he, he strikes me as a Bjork, you know? So I'm just trying to be funky. I'm trying to be funky. <laughs> Moon's over there smirking at me. <laughs> Silly. Yeah. The festival of Termina is upon us. Upon. Termina. You finally remember where you've heard the name Perkola before. The deity is often linked with the so-called festival of Termina. Information about the festival is murky, but it is often associated with gr times of great turmoil. Many massacres in history have been blamed on this deity and the moon. Horrible acts have been committed in the name of lunacy. You can't remember much else. The moon god in general is shrouded in great mystery, and his ways are often left unexplained. What is the Festival of Termina? It is a festival to give you, the humans, a peak to grandeur, and a chance to reach for illustrious heights. The festival to end all festivals this must be all very confusing to you so i wouldn't burden you with any more exposition and information at this very moment the information if you progress further i will gladly answer questions later down the road let us meet again under the moonlight I love being that bitch that can't speak, but will also judge when things aren't uh, written correctly, but also can't write. <laughs> I am both illiterate and nonverbal, by the way. I, I cannot speak and I cannot uh, write. Uh, this is true information. This is true information. I promise. I promise I'm not joking with you. This is true information. Okay. Why is he a drill sergeant? Uh, my zodiac is Aries. Uh, my birthday is actually coming up in a couple weeks. You hear voices echo from the beheaded wizard. Wake up, maggot! Fucking drill sergeant. 
The train. It seems to have stopped. You hear voices echoing from the beheaded wizard. I trust you got the gist of things. Let us proceed. We have work to do. Something seems off, though. This is not Moon God's usual modus operandi. Operandi. What's the birthday effect? Trust no one. But me, obviously. As long as you do what I say, I don't actually care about the trust part either. Now, move it, maggot! Well, yeah, but, like, that's... I'll be fine. I promise you. I definitely don't... I definitely do think that that, like, that, that I've definitely seen a lot of people who die near their birthday. Um, I also don't think that's going to happen to me. Uh, just considering how my health and also my current um, not going out situation is. I think I'm pretty chill. But I, I very much appreciate the concern. can finally run demon pete legion of demon got the combat manual and preheal map i do not need to talk to him it's the same over time <laughs> so that must be the best course of action for now you interrupt a discussion you hear voices echoing from the beheaded wizard oh, what's the shit show now oh the sleepy one got up something wrong you must be just as clueless as the rest of us the train left us all here at the outskirts of the city. All the train personnel, everyone gone. No explanations. I see. That's troublesome. Yeah, that's one way to put it. These fools. They have no knowledge of things to come. <laughs> I'm not saying fucking kick it. Every time he laughs. Nar. Not if I'm going to have this man in my inventory speaking his opinion the entire time. In any case, we've decided to stay and wait for a bit. Something has to come. Someone has to come for the train sooner or later. Every time he laughed. What's up? <laughs> I don't say yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> so if you're not in a hurry, maybe you can just take a seat inside and try and relax. Your outfit. It looks interesting. Who are you? You are their doom and torment, an embodiment of chaos, a pupil to the terror of modern man. I'm just some guy. <laughs> My name is Marina. You, uh, but a child trying, but a child trying to play with magic. Pathetic. Kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. I think Rogoroth was right. And if fear, fear and hunger truthers will know what I mean when I say I think Grogoroth was right. 
Speaking of, by the way, I have a Grogroth tattoo on my thigh that I did myself, which is also why I said that I am the number one Fear and Hunger fan, because I tattooed a Grogroth sigil on my thigh. <laughs> hey, thank you for the follow, Boy Scout! Gonna take a, gonna take a hit, because you got the weed number in your, you got the number in your username. My name's Olivia. Lovely to meet you all. <clears throat> Poor sod. A measly librarian waiting to be devastated. Okay, that's how you 100% know that he's full of shit and speaking out of his ass. Because she's a botanist. She's not a librarian. <laughs> she just looks like it. She could also kick your ass. You can call me August. Keep an eye on that one. I want to play August so bad. Oh my god. When I heard that they were still updating Fear and Hunger Termina and like they were adding stuff, I got so excited. I heard that they were also like adding more playable contestants, but I don't know if that was just like people getting like really happy or actual content. If they made it a DLC, I wouldn't be upset. I'm gonna be real. Ken Soya, a journalist on Duty. I already sense this bitch is an arrogant piece of filth. What if he just said I already sense this bitch is an arrogant piece of bitch? Because <laughs> that's what I read in my brain before I actually said it correctly. And I just lived in that world. And I, I wish everyone could live in that world with me. Just a silly ass world. Hey, I'm Henrik. A weakling with no remarkable traits whatsoever. That's what... That's what I call myself. <laughs> Me with my five pound weight next to my desk. A weak thing. I went, I went past text and, oh God, he's calling people maggots. This maggot carries filthy secrets. Dig them up. If he's talking about Don, I would love to. Thank you. I would love, I would love to dig up Don's secrets, if you know what I mean. If only my if only my VTube could let by it. <laughs> Before you came out, we were talking about this. You saw the dream too, right? Yes, I did see the dream. Everyone saw the same dream. Can you believe that? The moon, the color of the pink dress, the festival of Tamina. It all felt too real to pass off as just a dream. Not this talk again. We should have asked that army pig, that Bremen pig. He was in that way too much of a hurry to leave. I bet he knew something. This smells like a sadistic army experiment. Sounds exactly like something Bremen army would be part of. They had similar hallucinogens experiment on war prisoners. Now that the war is over, they had to get their guinea pigs elsewhere. You hear voices echo. Miserable fool. When people are this dim-witted, they don't even deserve to learn the truth. I wish I had your capacity in Feist, but I really have a hard time believing every conspiracy theory floating around. I'm a journalist. I've covered wars, you know. I don't need some flaky, eye-patched foreigner telling me what's possible and what's not. You haven't seen what I've seen during these past few years. I've covered wars, too, you know. All men and women for the past decade or two have covered wars. What's your point again? I've seen my fair share of hallucinogens as a doctor. And I can't tell from a first-hand experience that there are no known chemicals that create visions that vivid, especially visions that are identical with this many people. 
get roasted. <sighs> I take it that we're done here? As much as I'd like it, I don't have time to play happy campers with you people. I have a job to do. Which way is the city? She's... She... I'm giving her a voice to match her name and also to match how she literally talks to everyone around her. I hope everyone knows. I hate, I hate when she speaks because I have to speak like her and she's horrible. <laughs> look up, look up there over the roof, a forest top. Can you see the tower standing erect in the mist? That tower marks the center of Prehavel. You can hike through the forest to get there. It's not that far away. All right, then. If I see anyone, I'll let them know you guys are waiting there. Have fun finding a scoop from that sleepy town. Enough of this nonsense. We need to get going. Or start killing. Either is fine by me. <laughs> okay, I did it once. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> I'm not. I hate that. It sounds the same as, like, my follow sound, though. Do you know where to find us if anything comes up? What are you going to do? Wait here, I guess. I'm not in a hurry. Awesome. Day one. Monologue with the moon. Okay. Pog. Let's go. No need to talk to anyone. Crap. Uh, okay. So. Now it's gonna move. Move. F fuck you, Karen. Move. Now we are literally just gonna start our rampage. We have been unleashed onto the general populace. And it is time for everyone and everything in our path to crumble. I promise that is how this game is played. I hate doing... Uh, there, there we go. Okay. Um... I know there are also red herbs around here, I'm pretty sure. My character just like mass pogging as I stick my tongue out to focus. There they are. Got them. You know, you would think because oh, I don't think I actually have wild dagger. I was going to say, you would think if I got wild dagger, it would let me pick it up. I want that! Come here to me! Come here! God damn it. God damn it. I'm gonna go long right around. This is so. Okay. Awesome. 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 We're so pog. Now. We go back the other way. And we will start collecting companions. First stop, Abella. My phone just got a notification. What? What's up? My college loans is what's up. <laughs> Sally Mae reminding me that I owe the federal government money for a semester. Um, egg, egg, what is this, pathologic? Egg, search for anything useful, rotten meat, get the blue herb. Cloth fragment and an egg, tomato. Uh, herb. 
Um, burp, burp. There we go. Awesome. W, 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 all around. Yeah. Run up. Fucking faster. I want an infinite stamina bar. I use it so often. Cool. Cool. Dude, I'm so used to, like, not getting anything from the right side until way later. Because usually I like to do, like, a large loop around um, from, like, this side going through the lower outskirts of the town into the slums and then back through the other side but like now i've started like getting stuff from the other side first as well i'm just not used to like tanaka not being there oh speaking of if we don't get bolt cutters tanaka's dying um, Tanaka's fate is solely based on RNG right now. Cool. I have 120 by 5 health. Hell, hey. Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try with that. Just fucking hit that thing. Just hit it again. Numbers, baby. Hit it. Cool, now hit it again. Awesome. And that's how we will be killing most things. These have nothing of value. Oh, once again. Can't lose all that precious health. Do I have anything for it? I have no white vials. Oh my goodness. One second. Abella can wait. I must immediately abscond in search of a white vial. Oh my god. Yes, follow me. Perfection. Juking, baby. Juke science. Science of jukery. Fuck yeah. No need to work hard when you're smart. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm immediately leaving because there's someone in here and I need a Bella. Why do I need a Bella? Um, because I'm used to just being really cool and epic and poggers this early on. And that's hard to do without another team member right off the bat. Are they still up here? Nope. Awesome. Okay, let's go back. Uh, go back down... And ignore the truck entirely. But do not ignore the mushroom. Okay, open up. First party member. Awesome. Oh. It's you. You were on that train too, right? Found this hatch. Hatch in the middle of nowhere? Seems a bit suspicious, no? Interesting, the very least. How about we hop in and see what's under there? 
You have to be at least a little bit curious. Let's check it out. That's the spirit. Why am I giving her just like a nice Ameri a, a nice a nice voice? I like her. Uh, the two the two females that I'm giving nice uh, one is a nice American voice, one is a Karen voice. One of them is named Karen. <laughs> And Marine is my favorite, so she gets a cute little voice, too. Wow, this place is incredible. Wow, that was too California. Oh. I heard the Eastern Union had a big underground, had big underground networks around Preheeble, but I wasn't expecting this. What are these tunnels used for? I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of these tunnels exactly but they must have something to do with the position of this place. Preheval, and Bohemia in general, is placed in a rather strategic point. It's in the middle of many powerful countries. What they were building here, I have no idea. But many forces wanted to get their hands on this place. Oh, we haven't even introduced ourselves yet, have we? I'm Abella. Nice to meet you. You don't get to say a word, but I'll be traveling with you for a while now. Uh, sure, I guess. I can't be too friendly. I am playing as Osa. Who canonically is not the friendliest. You have to, like, push him to be your friend. It's kind of funny. He's also in the middle of nowhere, protected by a horse. Okay, tells my friends. Fuck! Tails always fails. Okay, well. Got another bolt. Scrap metal. Guess. Just dancing around to the music. Scrap metal, scrap metal, broomstick, two bolts. Oh my god. Oops, did not mean to. I'll just, we're not, we aren't Marco. We aren't Kahara. <laughs> okay, um, broomstick, mine. Uh, okay, let's leave for now because um, if we cross a certain line, Tanaka is just immediately fucking KO dead. Just, I mean, just dead. Uh, so, to be nice to him, we're not gonna go there quite yet. But if I can't find bolt cutters, he's dead. Because I need that key. And the only way to get there is to cross the line where he dies. I've heard that Osa is able to protect uh, both Abella and Henrik from being moon scorched. I have no clue how, so I might not be able to. I would love to be able to, because I am sentimental. Also, love the fact that I'm playing a magic character in a game that I really just like pressing attack on. Uh, also, we'll be coming back for everyone eventually because their heads are mine. I claim them. They're my property. It's my reward. Uh, Pug. Pug. 
cool. And then we just attack his torso. And then he's dead. See, I... This... I, I play at easy mode because otherwise I can't... I get so scared because, like, um, all of these... All of these are, like, life or death situations. If you're on regular mode. And usually, um when you're on uh easier mode um only most of them are life and death situations so just like the regular ghouls and stuff you can usually get through without like absolutely ruining your game doesn't make the rest of it any uh easier but <laughs> makes that easier can i get uh okay awesome 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 wow awesome 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 wow okay I need, I, I'm trying to be, like, as high up as possible so that I don't trigger the pig mask guy. Because I don't want to deal with him right now. I, well, he's going to tackle. But, oh, I forgot he set up a bear trap. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Um, heads. I'm. We're fine. Awesome. Perfect. Hey Moon, how long's the stream been going on? Been on for 36 minutes. Hell yeah. I, I'll just wrap up because I can. It's not like it saves over. Once I get a leechmonger ring, it's over for these hoes. Something I also think is like in Fear and Hunger um, 1, I'm also not that scared when in Mahabre. Um, as I am in the dungeon, I personally just think that I have a thing with claustrophobia and, um, deep, dark depths. Oh my god. I'm sorry. Your agility goes to one. Help me. Oh, this is just such a fucking bad piece. I put that on my fucking ghoul. I was looking at chat, and I know, like, 5% Spanish, so it was like, I know, and Espanol, I did not know. The first one. I need to heal. There we go. Okay. Nice. Anathema. 
have violet oil. That's fuck. Life just hates me. Cold grimoires. That's definitely gonna help me. This is a lie. Got a bone saw. Finally, the beheadings can begin. Okay. Don't fuck me. I've been fucked. There you go. Uh. <laughs> and then he leaves. Another more veil, please. Uh, awesome. White vial. Three nine millimeters because that will mean anything because I can definitely hold a gun. Egg and flay amintha. Okay. Please. Test our fails. Come on. Finally! You know what? Double chalk chalk. I'm double wielding chalk chalks. We got a magic attack of 56. Let's go. I hate that we can't search that top one. Die! Getting rid of your arms, you don't need them. Wait, I don't wanna, I wanna do one of those torso, oh my god. Yeah. Maybe double chalk chalk is fine. Gets rid of gets rid of Nazra so that I may have triple chalk chalk chalk. How many times can I say that word? Many. Uh, Soldier's Diary one, awesome. And with that one, got a bottle of beer. Hi guys, are you ready to die? Awesome, same strategy. One of us goes for one arm, one of us goes for the other arm. Decapitate. The bitch. Okay, awesome. Um, honestly, these ones can just be hit in the torso, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no mine. Immediately into this one. A bit easier. As we hit the same thing. Boom. Dead. I sometimes I realize that like I can not just take off their arms and then kill them and I can just kill them. But I never know the HP of all of the enemies so I don't. I don't, I want to do it with the least amount of, uh, HP taken from me. Because I would love to not use healing items as much as possible. 
one time I ended the game in the logic ending with like five pet pills and like a bunch of shit in my inventory um because I was scared to use them as you normally are um I wonder if you sacrifice um you sacrifice a contestant to grow Gra. Do you get the contestant soul? Hmm. I thought I just got a Bremen pig. Oh. Okay. You can have the Bremen pig Mastabella. It'll feel like you're Shognar again. Except that is an elephant. I'm pretty sure that I can just, yeah, okay. Great, because if he had clawed at me, he could have infected me, and that would have been a bot. Thank you, Elizabeth. <coughs> when water kills gamers, what do they turn to? Attack the local populace. Come on. Nothing could go wrong if you attack the locals. In Minecraft. Oh, that took one hit. Why are you stinking up my, my chat with cheese? Why are you stinking up my chat with cheese? Why are my mods so stinky? Heads, 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 heads. Fuck! Uh, Ring of the Still Blood means you don't get poison, but it sticks to your finger, I think. It prevents bleeding. Um, yeah, we'll just give it to a Bella. No reason not to. Okay, let's go. I don't need to go in that room. I know what's in there, and I don't need to go there. Attack more people. I'm so glad that he's too busy paying attention to scratching his face because he won't be paying attention to this hair. Hey, let's get him. Everyone has a centered arm and leg and or I am severing them. That would be great if I was like Don, but I'm not. Guess I have to make it so every character. Oh. Yep, now she's infected. And I could have killed him in one hit. Oh my god. Wow. Uh, wow. 
Wowie. Perfect. Okay. So opposite. Whoa. So many goddamn carrots. I don't care about your carrots. Tiger. Fuck yeah. Awesome. Steal her money. Steal her money. And now we're starting our loop. Fuck yeah. And then once I finish um, looping around and getting everyone, um, we are going to uh, get all of our soul shards and then maybe possibly um, sleep and save. And then it's getting close to our normal end time, so we might finish off, but probably got a good bit until then. Creeper. Aw, man. So we back in the mine. Got our pickaxe swinging from side to side. Sign, sign to sign. This task got only one. Hope to find some diamonds to anoint, noint, noint. Diamonds to noint. <laughs> if you sing it weird, then you can't get copyright claimed. I. That was also the joke. Oh. <laughs> the one, the joke was that no, if you sing it weird, you can't just go against copyright. Two, it's a parody, and I don't think Captain Sparkles. I don't think I don't I don't think he would care about. If he did, I would be really sad because he's a childhood hero of mine. Sorry, I've had a lot of childhood heroes come out of sexual predators lately. I had to have a moment. So we back in the mine. <laughs> You're not killing me today, bitch. I don't want his leg. I want his gun. I've always wondered if you don't cut off his arms, is his gun usable? But I um am not going to find out. Not today, at least. I don't think so, though. <laughs> Blinks with the music. Oh, just like Almer. Meow, 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 meow. 
喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵。<laughs> Silently meows, melancholy hill. Your other favorite YouTubers, they're coming out with cover songs. Me, I'm meowing. Dog. Fuck yeah. Awesome. Wow. Soft as head. So sad that you can't collect that head as well. Okay. Let's pill for this man for all he's worth. Hola, como estas white file? No one cares. Uh, you were getting paranoid because of the fear? Uh... Cool. One second. Someone needs some vodka. There we go. No fear, only alcohol. That doesn't help. Smoke some tobacco. God damn it. I hate when there's nothing in the barrel. Blurb. Well, can this junk be important to me? Screw the bolts. Do I look like a Bella? I haven't killed her yet. Cool. Uh, news. Uh, oh my god. Uh I only have Grogara. Well. Maybe if I had picked the Nushka, we would all be enjoying the perfect company of Pineco Pig. But I didn't think that far ahead. So we all suffer Pineco Pigless. Uh, okay. So. A couple more heads to decapitate. Then we get to speak with, uh, I think it's the tormented one. It might be the tainted one. Uh. One of them. I forget which one is a crow and which one is a hot lady. Oh, no, there he is. Okay. Well. Ouchie. Okay. 
Just get a certain thing. Come on. Hit him. Hit him. Come on. Yes. Yes. Awesome. That's the least amount of damage I've ever taken from that guy. Cool. Uh, yeah, I don't think I forgot anyone. Let's go. Now we go towards the manor. And, um, I finally get to see if Henrik's up to something. I have no clue if he's already. If he's nowhere to be found and the butler is also nowhere to be found, then, um, he's a goner, I'm pretty sure. No mare. Let's go upstairs. I meant no butler, not no mare. Uh, no Henrik. Okay, I guess we just loot the place. I swear. Shut up about your fear. Drink vodka. More. 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 Suicide is not always an option. Shut the actual fuck up. We fear so we survive. I must go on for I am afraid. I'm awesome. Cool. Hog. Awesome. Cool. Hog. More important to me is getting uh, his hand that casts hurting off than. Oh, God. Shut up. God bless. Uh, kill the hand. I hate his little grin. Yeah! Uh, get hurting cast on you, loser. Oh god. And just hit this man with your fists, Abella. Come on. Just hit her with just hit him. Just start punching. He'll die. Yeah. See? He died. Cause I'm so smart. Um it's off. He's out. I could drag Gurgroth symbol there, but once again, I don't know if sacrificing her will like do anything beneficial to me. Uh so I won't right now. Because I would rather have the extra hit. Honestly, my favorite thing to do if I am going to go on a run where, like, I'm killing contestants is I will keep them in my party and I will keep them all alive. And what I will do is I will just use them as fodder until, like, their limbs are all, like, gone and stuff like that. And then I'll kill them off myself. Um, because I ain't about to die. But I am about to let everyone else do it for me. Tails, 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 tails. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Life of Vile. Awesome. Because, you know, it's a game about survival. And the fittest is the one controlled by me. Whether I'm happy with my own choice or not. Because I have favorite baby girls. Okay. Everyone is fully equipped. Awesome. Happy with our haul so far. Would be happier uh, if that had anything of use. Yeah. 
Let's go loot the downstairs then. <sighs> okay, so we in skin bible, hell yes. Alchemia. Oh, fuck yes. That's really good. That's really good. Hell yeah. Mm, I don't need until the pocket cap. Okay. And awesome. It's over here. Oh. Nothing. Okay. Awesome. Fiokin Pog. Yes. Use a mana key. Tells never fails. Tells never fails. Tells never fails. Fuck! No, it does. It fails me so often. boys we've done it we've gotten the god of fear and hunger book we can now save it anytime for as many times as we want we are we are we are now god and i also just got a dragoon helmet fuck yes now let's go get food I'm an idiot. Immediately goes back up. Bolt. I have so many bolts. This must be the food storage for the old town. Okay. Awesome. 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 Okay. Uh, oh, you live. Awesome. in poggers now we go drop off all of our decapitated heads sacrifice all 19 tainted one yeah we play the secret song that echoes from within. The sound is like razors through flesh. Can you hear it? Yes, you can hear my voice after all. You who came with the offering, ask and thou shall receive. Give me the soul soldier! Oh, explorer of the further regions, farewell. Awesome. Now... Awesome. I'll, I'll let us eat. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna actually go save in the mansion so that when we come back next time we play this, we can immediately um, kill the gentleman because I'm actually gonna go for a set this time. Usually I just uh, do like the little talky talk and we and I just let him I just let him exist as his little gross horn self because you know sometimes you just gotta be a little little gross one little gross one guy. Um, 
but nah, not this time. So, we sleep. Welcome back. I take it that you are now acquainted with most of your fellow contestants. Keep up the pace. The festival won't last forever. I have no time to waste with you. Oh, yes, of course. Please, let's get on with your business here. How may I best aid you in your adventure? Let's do the hexing real quick before we save. Um... I have no affinity with Grogroth, huh? So I can't really. I don't have any affinity with anyone. Let's do the I can at least get all of my shit, though, which is great. Uh, and when Spice Forge, yes, please. Awesome. And then we save. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being on the stream today. Let me let me see. If, let me let me let me mix up the music a little bit. One second. Let me figure it out. There we go. Thank you all for coming. I loved having you here. I loved being here. Um, thank you everyone who followed. I'll see you guys again this Sunday for the Walking Dead stream. Uh, we'll be doing chapter three, so that'll be really fun. And then um, I'll probably see you next Wednesday for Fear and Hunger. If I don't, I might see you for Honkai. If I don't, I might see you for something else. Either way, I'll see you. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Bye. Come chat with me on Discord!